What is good? What is up? It's Jordan or Texans Thoughts, and I'm back with another Texans film breakdown. Today, we are finally going to be breaking down Deshaun Watson and his 2019 season's greatness. I'm so glad that we powered through quarterback purgatory and finally found the light at the end of the tunnel in Watson. With him, we know we've got a worker, a winner, and a leader. Someone who isn't content until he's the best in the game. Someone who elevates everyone around him and carries us to victory. And someone who a young kid can look up to as a role model. For me, that was always Kobe Bryant and I think for the next generation, Deshaun will have that same impact. I mean, Dabo said it best, Deshaun is the Michael Jordan of the NFL. I believe it and the rest of the world will soon. So if you enjoyed the video, please do hit that like button, subscribe for more content and comment down below your thoughts on the video. Now let's break down the film of future MVP Deshaun Watson because the film don't lie. So I could talk all day long about how great Watson is, but I'm going to focus on his three biggest strengths in my opinion, and I'm going to start with his elite ability to make off script plays because of how valuable that has become in the NFL today. You know, it's very hard to have an immobile quarterback who can't make plays with his legs as well as his arm. Luckily, we've got Watson who is of the modern mold of a dual threat quarterback, and no matter what the defense throws at him, he's always got a built in escape plan because of his mobility. If the offensive line messes up and allows a free defender, it doesn't matter because Watson will juke you out of your cleats and leave you in the dust. He has a sixth sense for incoming defenders and knows exactly when his time in the pocket has come to an end. This is actually an area that Watson has seen a lot of growth since his rookie season and he's just gotten so much better at command of the pocket. And knowing when to scramble versus just running away at the first sign of pressure and looking like a chicken with his head cut off. Watson did accumulate 413 rushing yards last year, which ranked 4th in the NFL in terms of quarterbacks. He's not used as heavily as Lamar Jackson, but that doesn't mean he can't do it. We would just prefer to preserve his body and not let him take as many big hits. But in the red zone, that's where the Texans really love to use his mobility on read option plays. These types of plays create a numbers advantage because you can essentially take a defender out of the play by forcing them into making a decision. And Watson has mastered the reads on these, leading to 7 rushing touchdowns last year, ranking 3rd in the NFL. While he's plenty fast, he's also just got pure heart and grit. While I said we want to preserve his health, Deshaun himself is never scared of contact. In fact, he embraces it. This is what I love about him. At the highest stakes, he's a winner. He will put his body on the line for his teammates, coaches, and fans and do whatever is necessary to get the dub. Straight up dragging two Bills defenders into the end zone. I think I can speak for all of us when I say that I was motherfucking hype when he did this. And quick shout out to Cullen, Gilly, Galaspia for the amazing block, but after that Watson, he still had to put two Bills into the ground. And that plays a huge role emotionally, devastating the Bills and empowering the Texans. That's what you want out of your leader, and that's what you get with Deshaun Watson. While most of his scrambling is random and reactionary, he does love to spin around and run to his right. Now, he does this because when he's scrambling, it's not just like an instant decision to say, alright, I left the pocket, now I'm only going to run. Instead, he's so good about keeping his eyes downfield, scanning for a potential throw and big gain. So he loves to scramble out to his right because it's easier to throw running in the direction of your strong hand, right? Your body's aligned better and you can be a more accurate thrower. So if stopping Watson's legs wasn't already hard enough, he has the ability to beat you with his arm when your defense is scrambling to contain him. And this next play will really show the mechanical reasons as to why Watson is so dangerous scrambling to his right. You know, it allows his shoulders and hips to naturally be aligned to his target thus making it an easier and more accurate throw. But don't get me wrong, he can still make absurd throws running to his left as well. It's harder, but he's just that damn talented. Off this play action fake, Hopkins is running a dig to the right, but Watson is forced to run to his left. These two had an amazing chemistry where Nuke would act as Watson's security blanket, turning around and helping him out, giving him a potential throw. I love Watson's fight and desire to never lose a yard on a play and to keep it alive for as long as possible, giving your wide receivers a chance to make something happen. Now this next play is exactly what I'm talking about when I say he keeps his eyes downfield, looking to pass first 
even when he's scrambling. He has tons of room to pick up probably 7 to 10 yards on the ground, but he notices Will Fuller coming open and can find him for 20 yards instead. Oh, and quick disclaimer, if any NFL refs are listening, or if your dad's a ref, your cousin's, or your next door neighbor's a ref, or if you eat at the same Denny's as a damn ref, tell them to hold their dang whistle and wait for Watson to be down, because this should have been six. And here's exactly what happens when you do swallow that whistle. A ridiculous highlight reel play for Sports Center next morning. Not even kicking Deshaun Watson in the eye will slow him down because he's so talented he can throw blind touchdowns. This is really taking the no look pass to the next level if you ask me. I mean you just can't sack this dude, two guys try and get him, he gets kicked, gets back up and throws a dot to Fells for 6. And it really wouldn't be a good breakdown if I didn't show the play of the year for Deshaun and the Texans and this is really just the epitome of willing your team to greatness. He gets nailed by two full speed defenders but no problem. Watson ain't going down like that. Oh, you didn't hear? It's clutch Watson to save the day. And the funny thing is, this play was never supposed to go to Taiwan Jones. He was really just a distraction to try and get Nuke open on this smash concept where he would run a quick hitch into the flat and Nuke would run a slot fade trying to get these cornerbacks to miscommunicate. However, the defense honestly played this perfectly, but Watson being the magician he is, he can beat a perfect defense, putting the team on his back and finishing the comeback victory. It's these winning plays that really give you confidence that you're never out of a game with Watson at the helm. Starting now, you're welcome to join the Texans Thoughts team and get some exclusive access to some big time perks. Hit this join button and for just $3.99, you'll get an extra video a month where you guys vote on what I make. Also, you'll be added to a private group chat with me and other members of the team where we can talk all things Texans. Check out the rest of the perks and for less than a foot long at Subway, hit that join button and become part of the Texans Thoughts team. Now, the next strength of Watson's game I want to talk about is his deep ball. He's undoubtedly one of the best in the game, and according to PFF, he's actually second behind only Russell Wilson. Now, there's a lot of things that go into a quarterback's deep ball ability, and one thing that amazes me with Watson is his quick release, an ability to stand tall in the pocket, taking a hit, and still delivering a strike. He isn't phased by pressure whatsoever, and you never see his fundamentals go to shit when someone comes screaming in his face. He's calm, cool, and collected 24-7. Another great example of this comes on the very next play, where Watson again proves just how clutch he is, only needing two plays to drive down an entire field and score, and again PFF grades him as the best clutch quarterback in one score games last year. Look how he buys himself time to avoid the pressure coming from his left on the blitz by stepping to his right. But then as he sees his target coming open, he quickly sets his feet and is able to follow through with his hips pointed towards his target just before he gets crunched. That's my quarterback. Like I mentioned before, his command of the pocket is sublime. Stepping up to avoid pressure, but not putting his head down and immediately scrambling, instead getting the biggest play possible. That's the issue when you deal with mobile quarterbacks. If you rush up field, undisciplined and don't contain, he'll buy time and burn your secondary. No one can guard for that long, let alone Jonathan Jones versus Kenny Stills. The other quick thing I love about his deep ball is the touch he can put on some of these throws. I mean, this looks straight up effortless. Just a flick of the wrist and the ball will land softly right in the receiver's hands. He's also so good about giving the receiver space to make a catch and run with it, maximizing yardage. We should really see a lot more of the deep game now with Brandon Cooks added to the fold. You know, you've got two of the best deep threats in the game with him and Fuller, and also Kenny Stills, who is no slouch either. I just can't wait to see it. Now, we know Watson has all the physical attributes to be a good deep ball thrower, but it's the mental aspect of the game, particularly being able to move or hold safeties with his eyes, that is honestly the most important aspect of the deep ball. You just can't play with only one safety deep against us, because Watson can manipulate them and force them out of position. The Titans are in cover 1 here as this defender follows Nuke out of the backfield, and the two routes that are most important here are Nuke on an in and Stills on a post. Watson looks to his left, and the safety Kevin Byard bites on it, because he can't give up anything easy to Nuke, but that's exactly what Watson wanted. He used Nuke as a distraction, because where he really wanted to go for the touchdown was Kenny, who's now got a one-on-one -on -one with his cornerback and no safety help over top. And that's an easy win for Sills every single time. 
The next and final strength I'm going to touch on is his ball placement, which I believe is elite. So with quarterbacks, there's obviously accuracy. Can you get the ball in the realm of the wide receiver and give them a catchable ball? But then there's also ball placement, where you can enhance a receiver's chance at catching the ball, lead them away from defenders, or squeeze throws into a tight window. Talking about that first point, Watson is so good at throwing his guys open. Even if they have a defender in close proximity, a perfect throw can always beat perfect coverage, and Watson has put the work in to improve greatly here. He's consistently able to place the ball just out of reach of the defender and where only our guy can get it. That means he's able to make tight window throws that are more high risk, but high reward as well. He loves attacking the middle of the field, but oftentimes defenses bring multiple defenders there because they know the scouting report. Nonetheless, Watson is able to thread needles right past defenders' outstretched arms and into our very own. On this next play, DeAndre Carter is running a deep over route and Watson's got to get it over the linebacker and below the safety while still keeping Carter from taking a huge hit. These may seem rudimentary, but this is what elevating the talent around you looks like, you know, making their jobs easier. Look how Watson places this ball slightly behind Carter to the inside. He does this instead of leading it to the outside, where Carter would keep running right into the safety and probably get a concussion from a big hit. This leads me to the last point that Watson is so good about leading his weapons out of danger and still giving them the chance to make a play. Look at this throw to Aikens where he sees the defender coming across the field and instead of leading Aikens forward for a potential yak, he cuts the throw off short a little to ensure Aikens doesn't get decapitated. We've seen time and time again that DBs, usually unintentionally, will go for kill shots over the middle to break up the ball and Watson wants to protect his guys. This ability is also great to lead them open because some throws if they're too far out in front just wouldn't be completed. This one is essentially behind Nuke, but that's really the only place that he could catch it. Now, as amazing as Watson is, no player is perfect and there are some areas where Watson could improve and really take his game to that next level. The first being with how he deals with blitzes. Now, I want to preface this by saying he's improved drastically in defeating Blitzes since his rookie season. If you want to see the growth he's had since then, check out TexansUnfiltered.com and I've broken down literally every single Deshaun Watson game in a Texans jersey. Now, fast forward to 2019, and what used to be a huge weakness still rears his ugly head every once in a while. On this play, the Panthers are able to fool Watson and it doesn't seem like he's able to ID the Blitz. So you can see how the Panthers, they're stacking the left side and Watson should really be sliding the O-line in that direction, which means each offensive lineman will take the guy to their left. But you don't see any communication or hand signals about sliding left and as the ball is snapped, yep, there's no slide, resulting in an unblocked defender. Now, before I go over some more poor plays, let me just show you what a good play looks like where it's evident that Watson IDs the blitz, slides the protection, but then there's a mishap with the O-line. So he's going to motion nuke from the slot across the formation and as the DB DJ Hayden doesn't move with him, that says two things. One that it's zone coverage and two that he's potentially blitzing. So you can see Watson point that out to the offense and that they should have slid that direction but they don't and Watson gets the brunt of it. Now this next play shows that Watson IDs the blitz, sets the right protection and then beats it with the throw as well. The Saints are crowding the line of scrimmage and it's tough to tell where the blitz is coming from, but Watson sends Duke across the formation to the right side, picking up the right blitzer, as this guy was actually just playing a weak spy. So he knows he needs to get the ball out quickly and hits Nuke on a slant for the easy gain. So Watson has improved greatly in this aspect, but he still has his blunders as many young quarterbacks do. Here he gets fooled by Kenny Moore and the Colts, who seem to always get us with this nickel blitz. So on this play, Watson sees Darius Leonard lined up in the slot over Fuller, and he must think that there's no way that they would put a linebacker on Fuller in space. Also, Kenny Moore is over Nuke, which would make more sense that he's actually covering Nuke instead of blitzing, right? But the Colts are really good at disguising their blitzes, and the protection isn't slid the correct way, and you can see that Watson points to the right, indicating Leonard as the blitzer, and as the ball is snapped, you can see how the offensive line slides to the right to pick up that supposed blitz, and it's especially indicated by Nick Martin here going to the right and helping out Fulton, and instead of going to the left and shifting the entire protection to pick up Kenny Moore instead, and thus the sack. You know, NFL defenses are hard to read, and it takes the greats years of experience to be able to read them and beat them every time, especially with blitzes. So I only expect Watson to get better at this, and that'll help big time for the success of this offense. Now in this one, you can see that he points to the left side here, as it looks like there's going to be a 3-on-2. So he slides the protection that way, making it a 3-on-3 by moving Martin over there, and that leaves Sharping and Tunsil with one guy each. 
but linebacker number 58 is actually faking the blitz, looking like he should occupy an offensive lineman, then actually dropping in coverage, while Donta Hightower is the actual blitzer, and because of this, Watson gets fooled, the offensive line is not set up properly, and that's another sack. Now, the last thing I'm going to talk about is a pretty small flaw in my opinion, and it's something that every young quarterback struggles with, which is basically just the occasional forced throw or poor decision. Watson is usually very, very good with this, but there were a handful of times last season that you would just be like, what are you doing? You, you don't got to force that and make a hero play, you know what I mean? You know, I get that he's a playmaker, a gunslinger, and I'm not saying he shouldn't be escaping the pocket and making crazy off-script plays. I love that about him. But it's these couple ones that are just truly not great decisions where it's a very risky throw and he seems like he's forcing it. And if he can continue to cut those out of his game because he has improved on this every single year, that would be huge. And where I kind of saw it the most was when he would stare down DeAndre Hopkins and not really see his other weapons that were open. You know, I get that Nuke is his most reliable weapon and it's hard to trust guys like Kiki QT and DeAndre Carter, some other guys, but... Now, with legit four deep veteran receivers, I'm excited to see Watson not have that crutch to lean on and kind of be able to spread the ball around and not force feed the ball because Nuke was that dominant type of dude. You know, I think it can help open up the offense and put any and all rumors that Nuke made Watson elite to bed. All right, that'll do it for my Deshaun Watson film breakdown. I'm so ready for the season to start, man, and for Watson to be one of the leading MVP candidates. If you enjoyed the video, please do hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and comment down below whether or not you think Watson will win MVP. If you're in need of more Texans content, check out the Texans Unfiltered links in the description. We got you. Now take care everyone, and remember, the film don't lie.